What's new in the medical community? Da da da. In your niche? Da da da. Xylazine. Which I have never heard of. Mm -hmm. It's a catchy name, though. I like it. Xylazine. Yeah, it sounds kind of rad. Yeah, it sounds a little sexy. Xylazine. Well, it's very scary. Oh, hell. Um, oh. It's the deadliest drug out right now. That is not sexy fentanyl. at all. So everybody's talking fentanyl, but this is just different. Yeah. People are mixing xylazine and fentanyl. and Because death doesn't come quick enough? Right. They're okay. mixing fentanyl with everything, though. Whatever happened to just good old heroin? Well, that, <laughs> that, no, that's... That's not a thing That's anymore. Out. There's very little heroin out there. It's mostly fentanyl. That's why music sucks. Mm -hmm. You hear that? If you're on heroin, you can kind of fly under the radar. No, but no, no. Not if you have <laughs> a drug no. test. It still, it still comes They still up. test for it. That's where they get you, Robert. That's where they mm -hmm. get you. So xylazine is a tranquilizer. And the thing is, so if you're on heroin or fentanyl, there's something called Narcan that you can reverse the effects. So I know if you where have this an overdose. Mm. Oh, what? I was interrupting you. Yeah. I know where this is going. Narcan is not effective on xylazine no, overdoses. It's not. So there's people dying. And the xylazine is in 48 out of the 50 states right now. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Hawaii and Alaska. No one's going to make the trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They need a chemist in those places to get it going. They need people in those places. Well, I guess they have enough in Hawaii, but yeah. it's way out there. How does it distribute, just like everything else? It's coming from, from what I'm gathering, from China, and it's killing people. So I it's mean, straight up illegal. It is. Okay, so there's no Okay, so there's no medical benefit that we... It, it's not the fact it's being well, used. It's a it was used on animals, is what it was used on, and then... Um, can you get some so I can put it under Alex's house? Is it... <laughs> <laughs> So I take it this is like a liquid drip type drug, or is this a pill, or is this, what is this? So it's mixed. I'm assuming that it's, I don't really know a whole lot about it yet, but I think it's going to be powdered form because if you're mixing it with heroin or fentanyl, mm -hmm. that comes in powder. And if mm -hmm. you can't tell that it's in things, that would make me assume that it would be some okay. kind of powder form. But So no suppositories should be an easy trip. Right. I, I don't think that it would be in a suppository, <laughs> but who knows? Don't give any ideas yeah. out there. And I'm just saying. It's safer than sharing a needle. Yeah. And quick delivery. I don't know. It's safer it, than, than sharing a needle? A suppository. Should oh. be. Yeah, I wouldn't want to share a suppository, as as but as long as, you know. Standard knew size, the person, maybe. kind of small and greasy. <laughs> oh, man. If you guys ever seen the movie Train Spotting, it's an early uh, Ewan McGregor movie that they talk about. They they use heroin suppositories. That's one of my faves, favorite movies that I haven't seen. One scene to describe: he's tripping off his hair, tripping balls off his heroin, takes a dump, realizes the suppository's out, so he trips by diving into the toilet and fetching it. And this is your Obi Wan Kenobi. That's literally the role that put him on the map. Obi Wan Kenobi mm -hmm. swam in a dirty toilet for a heroin suppository in an independent film. Well, if it was xylazine, he would have died. Yeah. True trying to swim. He'd probably drown. You were saying? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to get off subject here. But I think it is really, people are going to start hearing about it more and more because I... It's definitely got a, a catchier name than fentanyl, like xylazine. I like that zine part. They'll come up with a slang for it, though. Or well, it probably already is one. Probably. Yeah. Zine. The Drug Enforcement Administration, they're thinking about coming out with test kits just so that people can test things for it. Well, um, we know so how well the government reacts. Specifically illicit substances, but... There's one thing know. the government knows what to do is to fight the war on drugs. Good job, government. Keep it up. <laughs> so I work in addiction medicine and infectious disease, so it's a daily thing. It's tough. It's a, you know, it's a serious subject. Does it ever make you cynical? Sometimes, because I find myself sometimes I get cynical with some people like, you know what? You're doing this to yourself. Fuck you. The world will be a little lighter without you, you know? I don't know if she can answer that truthfully. Well, I mean, no, maybe, I can. No, I maybe, definitely can. There's some people who are helpless that I'm just like, why are we wasting so much time, effort, and resources? Resources. On? Okay, so let's, let's just talk about how it gets started. How does an addiction get started? Just what is your thought process on that? You There's a hundred different ways. But I mean, why do people take it the first time? Because they have a void and they're trying to fill it, even if it's Or art, it's fun, depending on what it is. Their friends push them into it. Or it's just, or it just ridiculously be... available with the people they're hanging out. So, yeah. It could just inevitability. be Inevitability. It could be, or... 
let's just say somebody got in a car accident okay. and they were put well, on pain pills. You know, bodybuilders sometimes get hooked on other drugs because their dealer for their steroids just may have other stuff. I've seen that happen. I was about to say, unfortunately. Uh, most people who do heroin didn't start off on heroin. They started no. off on painkillers. They did start off on pain pills, a lot of them. And then what? here's what happens. Pain pills are really expensive. Mm. A 30 milligram roxycodone goes for about $30. That's one pill. And so they can't afford to keep it up. So here's what we did. Pain pills were given out like candy by some of these doctors, and that's what like started free them. free samples and stuff. Not free free samples, but they wanted to treat a script pain. for two hundred. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, script for two hundred pain pills, and then all of a sudden we decided, oh, this isn't a good thing. People are getting hooked on it, and so then we cut them off. Well, then where do they go? So they go to the streets. Yeah. And then on the streets, unfortunately, there's something called pressed pills. And pressed pills look just like a regular Percocet, Roxycodone, but they have fentanyl in them. Yeah. That's and what that's killed what's Prince. killing people. That's what killed Prince. To add on to the fentanyl, now there's xylazine. What I have noticed in addiction is a lot of people are treating anxiety, depression. Um, a lot of people have been abused as children. There's something called an ACE questionnaire and it's adverse childhood experiences. If you look at that, the higher the score, the greater the chances of you overdosing or having chronic health conditions related to what's happened to you in your childhood. There's a lot of different reasons that people start using drugs. And so it's not like, it's not all it's cracked up to be when you think it's just fun. People are just trying to numb their emotions or numb their pain. And then it just leads into other things. For instance, hepatitis C. Which is expensive to treat. Mm -hmm. It's something like $80,000 for treatment, but it's easy to get now. Treatment Did, is. is the treatment pretty effective? Oh, yeah. It's got a 98, 99% cure rate. So and you can be treated in 8 to 12 weeks. My question is, once you've got that 80000 which most of the time is going to be a sponsored thing, someone's else is paying for that that's someone else's burden i think that's where todd's question no, about that. is it cynical are you cynical well my thing is there's some people that are just like okay with being addicts but they're going to get over that hep c and then catch it again no i well, mean the, the idea is whoever's treating the hepatitis c is educating them on harm reduction so that they don't <laughs> get it i, I just I, I feel there's people take advantage of true compassion those oh, people, I agree. I've yeah. seen that a lot in healthcare. But, and, but. And, and because of that, that's where I get a little cynical. I'm sorry, this nation fucked you over on mental health, but it's not my problem and you're making it my problem now. And it's just like, they go in a cycle where they'll get arrested for something, get incarcerated for two days, judge gives them a slap on the wrist, back on the street, does the same thing over again. And I just get jaded to the fact of the same people, not just, I, I say homeless like a broad statement, but really mm -hmm. I'm talking about like five people, homeless people. In, uh, in five Greenville. homeless people. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's situation is different, and they're not everyone that's homeless is a nuisance. Right. But yeah. I mean, we have veterans that are homeless, and that is just well. The well, majority we be treating them so much better. I was about to say the majority just suffers from mental illness. Absolutely, and, and there is one place, and I'm not going to mention any names right now, but the, the Patrick B. Harris. No, no. <laughs> but the wait to get in to see a psychiatrist is eight months. Goodness. Can you imagine what all could happen in eight months? It's crazy. And people are, they're self-medicating with whatever substance, be it alcohol, be it heroin, cocaine, whatever. They're self-medicating themselves because they can't get treatment elsewhere. I don't know. It's too serious of a well, subject. I mean, it's just, it really is. When I worked at the resident clinic, which mm -hmm. this is where there's a lot of homeless patients mm -hmm. there, but it's just people that have hospital sponsorship, meaning they don't have to pay a bill. I was in orthopedics. I don't know the other specialties that come through that same clinic, but three days a week we were there, and I didn't mind working with those people. I kind of like working with those people. They could generally, if you showed compassion, they would show it back. You know, if you show them love, they would show it back. You mm -hmm. could sense that they were grateful. But those five people Todd's talking about is maybe something different. Well, it's just one of them got into a physical altercation with one of my other managers at the time. That's and, pretty rough. And this is how I know the, the, about the cycle. Among the cops, it's kind of like, oh yeah, that's so-and-so. Yeah, he's a little bit of a fighter. And I'm like, what's going to happen? It's like, he'll probably be in locked up for about two days, slap on the wrist, out on the street until we get another call that he fought someone again. And, you know, and this guy's just got the piss poor attitude of the world. Every, you know, everyone's out to get him. It's I've everyone else's that, fault. So. And it's, oh, okay, it's my fault you're an asshole. Gotcha. Yeah, fuck that guy it's tough too because i don't know if the general public knows this but it costs a certain amount of money per day to have somebody in jail yeah so that's hard too i mean it's just like these people are nothing but leeches on society and 
when I say these people, I'm talking about those that are actually leeches on society. I mean, there are people out there that are definitely going to abuse the system. And at the end of the day, you just want to do what's right and treat people with respect and love. And If you really want to help the homeless, give them an opportunity, not money. Some people... Never money. Sometimes food, never money. Not necessarily homeless people, but in general. Some people you can't help. And right. some you can. Mm -hmm. And if I ever get homeless and have the ability to, like, walk or do anything, I'm going to scrape up the money for a bus ticket and head to probably San Antonio. I wouldn't do good with cold weather. Mm -hmm. So I can't be homeless here. i got to go somewhere warm. Definitely. I'd go to San Francisco and be treated like a king. I'm going to take a shit on your lawn. That's right. You paid over a million dollars for this lawn to be in the city limits of San Francisco, and I can defecate on it, and you can't do shit about it. That's actually a thing. They st wow. There's probably, I guarantee you, someone is scheming on a, a plan to give every homeless person X amount of money. Uh, Utah, they tried, and this is actually makes economical sense, going back to what you were talking about of the cost of just processing these people in an endless cycle. They gave them a free apartment. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say it was Salt Lake City. There's some city in Utah that tried now, this. Now, are there any... Okay, so I feel like if you're going to give somebody something like that, there needs to be you know, drug testing, and they need to have some responsibilities. It can't just be, here's your free house. Now you do whatever you want to in there. If somebody's paying for your house, it needs to be structured. Yeah, it you should need, be. And like, teach them skills. Teach them trades oh well, the majority of people would say they have trouble with getting a job or an opportunity because they have no permanent residence this gives them a permanent residence and it's an apartment i'm not sure if it's lavish or not i doubt it government paid it's going to be like the bare minimum i'm sure but a lot more than nothing what sold the plan was the economics of it it mm -hmm. just saves the taxpayers so much more money in the long run mm -hmm. how bad does homelessness have to get in america where giving a free apartment ceasing them being homeless is the economical answer <laughs> think about that Think how much property costs now, and you're just giving certain people, here's a free apartment. Meanwhile, some people in Greenville are paying like $1,600 for a two-bedroom. If not one bedroom. <laughs> I, I think people are overextending their finances more than ever now. Credit oh, card yeah. debt's at an all-time high. The average car payment is over $700 a month, which I've always liked peace of mind. And that's something that doesn't necessarily come with money. Although if you use money wisely, you can obtain it. Like actually having a modest place to live and it actually being yours. Not having a car payment every month. Or having I've never a had a car, car payment. payment. Yeah, it's just like little things like that can give you peace of mind. Having a savings for a rainy day or God forbid life happens and you have a, something you have to unexpectedly take. Take care of but i did drive some clunkers you couldn't go on a date in these cars that i owned well i just had them anyway <laughs> one seater's get... gotcha <laughs> unicycle with two doors <laughs> a little electric motor that was burnt out no, no longer functioning <laughs> a cheetah with a saddle on its back sweatpants before they were cool <laughs> <laughs> what's making a fashion comeback now i don't know windbreakers Check someone else's podcast, Our Trust Todd's Answer. Windbreakers. Just you wait and see. Bell bottoms. No, windbreakers. <laughs> Wind never stood a chance.